I am Bill McLaughlin, Editor-in-Chief of Furniture Today, and uh, welcome to a new year. This week, tip-overs were all over social media as video of a two-year-old rescuing his twin brother from a tipped-over dresser uh, went viral with over 12 million views on YouTube, 60,000 shares on Facebook. Um, it brings that issue right to the forefront of consumer consciousness, and uh, you can read about that in my column coming up this week and uh, online today. It's an issue that the industry is going to have to address. Um, and now we're going to go around the table and talk about some other things the industry will be addressing in the coming weeks. Hey, what's going on in the uh, world of upholstery and style? Well, we are headed to Atlanta next week for market, um, and then Las Vegas after that. So we'll be talking to everybody about the trends, what's happening, what they're looking for for this season. Um, but in addition, I'm working on a technology report for upholstery in early February. And we're talking with different companies throughout the industry about some of the things they're doing to really kind of up the consumer must-have um, aspect of their upholstery. And I'm hoping um, that we're going to be able to sort of continue that on into the fabric world and talk to some of our fabric guys who are you know, going gangbusters with performance about some of the different technologies behind performance fabrics and how they are delineating themselves um, and how that can translate into the consumer market as well. In the news lately, we've been keeping an eye on um, um, Donald Trump's nominees for cabinet positions, people in his administration. And of particular interest to the furniture industry is his nominee for U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer. Um, Lighthizer is a Washington lawyer specializing in international trade. He also served in the Reagan administration as deputy trade representative um, with the title of ambassador. Um, in the past, he's taken a pretty hard line toward, um, um, toward trade agreements, um, in particular China, in um, testimony before Congress a few years ago. He just said that we need to be a lot more aggressive in how we're dealing um, with China in particular. Depending on um, how that plays out, that could um, impact um, furniture with possible tariffs. Um, we just don't know yet. But I got a hold of several people in the industry to get their thoughts on it. And right now it's kind of wait and see. But the overall sense I got is that he's going to do what Donald Trump wants to do. And that would mean uh, maybe avoiding things like the Trans-Pacific Trans Partnership um, in, in favor of um, developing individual deals with individual countries. So we'll see what happens with that. Bill, the big uh, news on the case good, high end case good side of the business this week is the purchase of Theodore Alexander by an investment fund based in China called Creative Home Furniture. Now, this company, as we've learned, does the majority of its business as an importer and wholesaler of furniture in China. Uh, this Creative Home Furniture also has some U.S. brands already, Kino Brothers, Elizabeth Oliver Creations, and Jamie Drake. So there's some familiar names in the industry, so this is not necessarily a stretch for them to acquire another high-end um, manufacturer. It'll be interesting to watch. As you can see, there's a, a lot going on. Uh, please stay tuned to Furniture Today for more coverage of the incoming Trump administration. Uh, on the cover of our Las Vegas issue, you will hear uh, many leading figures from the industry share their insights on what they think 2017 holds for the industry. So please look for that uh, on the opening day of the Las Vegas market. Till next week, I'm Bill McLaughlin with Furniture Today, wishing you good business.